It's from Sir William Usler. Yep. Medicine is a science of uncertainty and an art of probability. Yes. Explain that. Explain that is because uh, uh, everybody's different, okay? And up to, the, uh, say, a few years ago, and uh, people can only get measure a person's de- a data mm-hmm. and give the same drug and same dose to treat the patient, mm-hmm. okay? So a final output, and uh, because they cannot treat the patient according to their specific uh, situation. Right. So the record is always is, uh, 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 based on a large number of the patient. Right. Say, oh, and uh, this treatment or how many percent of the patient will be ben- benefited. Right. So okay. we're, we're treating the condition, not the individual exactly. person. Exactly. Same patient. Uh, well, the patient have the same disease will receive the same drug and the same dose. Right. Um, so then this leads into um, your work, which is into phenotypic personalized yes. medicine. So talk a little bit about that. What What is that by definition, and, and where is that taking you? Okay. So uh, so it, because one which the reason in the past, we cannot treat patient accustomed to its specific disease and the mm-hmm. physiology condition. Okay. It's because we don't have a relation between the input, which is a drug and a dose, and output is efficacy or toxicity. Oh, I see. So we discover a very simple equation and which can relate the input and the output. Mm-hmm. So by doing that, we can know exactly what is the best drug and the dose for that patient at that moment. Wow. At that moment is very critical mm-hmm. because the human body changes. Okay, and some disease changes every day. Right. So we have to be able to adjust the uh, uh, thera- therapy every day. Wow. Okay. And that's not uh, possible in the past. Right. So we did that. After we did that, now we can see every patient, we, they need a very different uh, drug and the dose mm-hmm. also may be every day okay after we are be, uh, w- after we are being able to do that so we do not have a base on statistics to treat a patient mm-hmm. and also patient will get optimized uh, therapy mm-hmm. what kinds of conditions are we talking about uh, you mean a disease yeah so right, we yeah. actually our method is uh, uh, artificial intelligence based method okay. so we do not depends on the mechanism of the disease. Hmm. In other words, after we have found that equation, and uh, we can use that equation to treat various different type of diseases. Mm-hmm. Like uh, we have tested on about more than, uh, more than 20 or 25 disease models. And we even uh, test, uh, have clinical tests on the three major disease category. Mm-hmm. One is cancer. One is organ transplant, and other one is infectious disease. Wow. And in all the uh, clinical tests we have done, we have about 80 patients mm. and uh, finished the clinical test, and uh, none of that failed. None of that failed. That's very rare in uh, cancer. Typical right. cancer is one out of four patients has response, and we can make every patient <coughs> response to the best response. So in in cancer treatment in particular, you're trying to uh, keep the patient alive while you kill the cancer in a way. Yes, that's right. So what you're saying is that because this is much more calibrated to their particular situation. That's right. uh, You're doing a lot more of the killing the cancer and a lot less of killing the patient. Exactly. Actually, you bring up a very important point Mm -hmm. because all the drugs are toxic. Right. Okay. And uh, so you wanted to kill more the cancer cells mm-hmm. and uh, w- the minimum damage to the human cells, right. such that the patient can so can go in through this very very uh, difficult time and uh, survive. Okay. And uh, most of the time is uh, when we give a a, a, a typical treatment, mm-hmm. you always give high dose because we think high dose will give high efficacy. Mm-hmm. But in our case, we use a most, 
we use combinatory drug. So put the two or three drugs together. And by doing that, usually we can drop the dose dramatically and has high, very high efficacy, but very low tox, much lower toxicity. Wow. Yeah. What is the clinical setting under which you're doing this? Like, where are you doing this? Oh, we're doing uh, maybe 20 different uh, uh, medical centers around the world. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Asia, U.S., and uh, Europe, every, everywhere. Where are, are you based at UCLA? I'm and, based at UCLA. Okay. So, so what led you down this path towards uh, personalized medicine in particular? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> I was trained at the Johns Hopkins. Okay. And I, uh, Johns Hopkins is very famous in, uh, in uh, medicine. Of course. Uh, Sir Osler was the one of the four founding professors right. in uh, Johns Hopkins Medical School. But I was trained over the, actually in uh, aerospace, mm-hmm. in aerodynamics. There was a trend as aerodynamics, and I spent about 20 years working on that area. Right. And uh, after 20 years, I just get in bored. Last challenge. Last challenge means every time I write a proposal, I say I will do this. And at the end of five years, I pretty much deliver. Uh, what I deliver is pretty much plus or minus 15, 20 percent right. as what I wrote in a proposal. Right. And start think why should I write the proposal? Why should I spend public money make an incremental uh, increase? Especially, and uh, my student will spend five years of his precious time right. doing something I pretty much know already. So then I start look around and look around. And in the nineteen ninety, I met uh, Professor Yu Chung Tai. Mm. He was one of the founding father of MEMS technology. Okay, MEMS technology is using the lithographic process of uh, electric engineering to make a very, very small mechanical parts. Mm-hmm. So bo- so he can make all these mechanical devices, and my background is for mechanics. So we start to working on the microfluidics. Mm-hmm. Then we apply that to do all sorts of uh, uh, biomarker detections, try, right. to, de- try to diagnosis disease okay and in our lab we can detect one single molecule so what is the next step mm. okay let's also reach to the limit same thing after 20 years I fell lost challenge right so I almost uh, going to retire okay and uh, then just a few years before retirement I, one of my v- a good friends a very famous biologist so she come to my office mm. Then we chatting. She, I, I told her, I say, teach me something about biology. My biology was a 50 years old biology. That's true. When I learn biology, even DNA was not mentioned. Mm-hmm. Okay, you see, I'm a dinosaur. Okay. So, I said, uh, so she started teaching me how does the biologist try to build the the network inside the cell. It's like a CPU. Right. Okay. So that. Uh, protein protein interactions, messenger RNA uh, interactions. So that's, I said, well, that's very tough. It will take you a million years. He said, yeah, I don't know about a million years, but it takes us 300, uh, 400 teams around the world to spend uh, 10 to 15 years. We will find out one segment of the pathway. Right. I said, okay. But uh, that's uh, really tough. He said, yes. So I said, uh, Engineers is a very practical person. Mm-hmm. We want to know when can I get the results mm-hmm. in the reasonable time. So what we do is we just look input and output, okay. drug and efficacy. And but that's not the, the scientist mm-hmm. trying to do. Scientists want to understand everything. Right. So I get one of my student and uh, try to study how we stop the viral, the herpes virus infection, use a feedback concept, mm. the, uh, the artificial intelligence-based art, feedback concept. Mm. So the student, uh, in one month, we can find out the best drug dose combination from one million pos- possible combinations. So that I get now. 
and but that method is not be able to scale to animal and human tests. Right. So another one of my postdocs found out the drug dose uh, response surface mm -hmm. is a very smooth surface. And then we found that the governing equation is a parabolic equation. Right. That solved the problem. And uh, so that means we can do a very small number of tests mm -hmm. and uh, we, c we own the patient. We know what drug does give to patient and what response he or she will get. Mm -hmm. That's become personalized medicine. And this has become AI PRS. Yeah, AI PRS. AI, AI actually is part of that, it enable us to find out the surface. Mm -hmm. But uh, usually AI need the big data. Right. In a clinical setting, <clears throat> there's no way you can get a big data. So based on that, we found that the smooth surface is parabolic surface. Mm. Then we use the other regression method to find this equation. That equation enables us to do that. So mm -hmm. two steps. Mm -hmm. And why? Because we found that the surface is AI mm -hmm. and it's parabolic response surface. What um, challenges or perhaps risks come with, um, uh, as you said, uh, going by a population base, but then working through a formula and through uh, an AI-enabled system mm -hmm. to uh, diagnose and, and treat patients, yeah. as opposed to what is a much longer, arguably much longer road of having lots of um, micro and nano sensing uh, capabilities and as you said, collecting data, like what, what are the pitfalls to each okay. of those? Okay, actually uh, for our personalized medicine, mm -hmm. uh, we, did, we didn't use our like a micro or nano sensors. Okay. We just use typical sensor. Actually, we, typical sensing, actually we just use what the hospital is doing. Mm -hmm. That's a very important step, okay? First thing is uh, the s micro sensor. We can do a really fantastic uh, molecular sensor, but it's not FDA approved. I we see. cannot uh, base on that to give the uh, a drug in those decisions. Right. Okay, so we just use typical uh, hospital used uh, uh, drug testing, etc. Right, and uh, that also make so basically we don't change the system, hospital right. system. Yeah, okay, and uh, we just uh, gather the blood test results or imaging mm -hmm. and based on that we make it based on our uh, formula and tell what is the next dose yeah and that's what we're doing and also it doesn't cost anything right everything of from the hospital point of view nothing changed right okay just we say change the dose or change the drug you've you've gotten to helping people have better outcomes in a much shorter time than and also very low take. cost right that's and uh, also the uh, the output, uh, we, as we said, we can make almost every patient reach its optimum outcome. Well, what other um, conditions, what other treatment situations do you think this could expand to in the future? Uh, we can, uh, as I said, we're already in the cells in animals, yeah. and uh, we already have tested about 20, 30 different diseases. Right. Okay. And then now we also have a many clinical tests finished. So what we do now is we try to, like we have about uh, four or five clinical tests on different disease models, mm -hmm. and then now we can gradually expand the, the clinical test to many other disease models. Right. Um, anything else that you're going to be talking about of note uh, in your keynote that you want to you wanna give us a teaser for? <clears throat> okay. And I have a last slide. I don't. I'm not sure. I will. I will show that. You don't have okay. to give it away. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to give it away. Right. If now or later, because this will be this broadcast will be after my talk, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. So, so we found this method, uh -huh. and uh, for engineers, everybody accept that mm -hmm. because this is engineering approach. Okay, and the biology is very hard to accept that because we did not use any of the omics. Right. Like a genome and and the protein, all this we use didn't use mechanism, right? And uh, so whenever I give a talk, there'll be few people come to me and say let's work together, right? And uh, always I say you guys most are clinicians, okay? Clinicians, uh, like engineer, mm -hmm. we have to solve the problem. That's right. Right away, 
Okay, the patient is on the bed. That's right. Okay, and uh, the reason for biology is hard to them because uh, you our method we do not use any mechanism based result. Right. Okay. So the question will ask you whether gen, uh, genes or is really matters. Yes, it matters. Okay, and the way we did that is we solved that problem when we pick the appropriate drug mm -hmm. at the cell level. So we have a lot of freedoms to do that. Then go to the animal level, to the system level, then the dose is a dominating factor. Right. So my last fact, uh, picture is showing my six years old granddaughter and my 102 years old mother. Right. You see the two pictures, they are identical. So gene does matter. Right. Okay, but you have to know when to use it and when uh, don't have to purely based on this mechanism right. based. So you feel that perhaps in some ways we've overly focused on uh, uh, this set of information. The molecular mechanisms. Yeah. And also we did another experiment that shows we take all. Okay, one example that's known in the medi uh, medicine field mm -hmm. identical twins, they got the same disease. Right. You cannot treat exactly the same way. Because uh, physiology, mm -hmm. metabolism is uh, dominating in the uh, treatment. Mm -hmm. Because these two organisms have diverged yeah, uh, exactly. from birth. You know, when the, not on from birth, right. from the time when the uh, sperm, right? Uh, yeah, right. When you, the sperm get into the egg, right. that's identical to it. Right. As soon as it was divided into two, they are different. And uh, there are several very famous papers show that during the uh, dividing the cell division, mm -hmm. and uh, then there's a stochastic process. So the two cells are different already. Right. It's fascinating. Yeah. Thank you so much for speaking with us. Yeah. And, uh, You're quite welcome. Best of luck with your keynote. Thank you very much.